with lawyer and analyst Stephen Skirka continues on In-Depth Radio, News Talk 1010. Brian Greenspan and David Humphrey are my guests on the Legal Roundtable today. We're discussing the Nova Scotia Hitman case. I'm delighted to see we're getting a number of calls and comments. I apologize if I don't get to all of them. Let's deal with Dan from Hamilton. You have a question, Dan? Uh, yeah, I find it really, really curious, uh, despite the fact that the last general social survey puts the uh, rates of domestic violence at 6.4% of women and 6% of, of uh, men, that Mr. Ryan's status as the victim in this matter was not addressed. Why wasn't Mrs. Ryan's testimony or story questioned? This really is, you know, a heinous insult to justice. Um, you know, shouldn't she be put under some sort of scrutiny? All right, well, I'll let... Brian and David well, both decide who's going to take that question. Well, she, she was put under scrutiny. She was she testified at trial. She was cross-examined extensively. Uh, the Crown attempted, uh, in fact, uh, to undermine uh, the uh, uh, her credibility. Uh, the Crown chose not to call Mr. Ryan, which gives some insight into the faith that the Crown had in his veracity. And so it's the Crown that makes that choice. The Crown chose to cross-examine vigorously, and it, what is clear is the findings were unequivocal. That the bindings of the trial judge. The trial judge, the abuse she suffered and the protracted nature of these proceedings have taken a toll on her. And there's no question that there were unequivocal findings and acceptance of her version of events. So that, that leads to uh, a real question in terms of the impact upon uh, Mrs. Ryan. She was a teacher in the community. Uh, she was a, an upstanding member of the community. It's had enormous impact on her life. And in fact, she was trying to protect her child as well, who was apparently, according to her evidence, which was accepted, her child was also part of the threatening nature of her husband's behavior. And as a result of the charges, the child was taken away from her, and ultimately the child was given to her husband. Her husband has disappeared from Nova Scotia. Mrs. Ryan has no idea where her daughter is. She has suffered enormously as a so, result of what took place. Okay, well, Dan, let me just uh, pick up the point uh, with David. Dave, first of all, counseling to commit murder prosecution, you know, is treated very seriously by prosecutors. This is not a shoplifting case. Is it that is, fair? And this one was. All right. Secondly, let's just pick up on what Brian said because this is a point of contention. It's being raised in columns. It was raised in the column of Barbara Kay in the National Post suggesting, you know, this gender bias because this is a woman rather than, than a man charged here. So let's deal with this. You have Nicole Ryan on the witness stand being vigorously challenged about her allegations of abuse by her former husband, right? Right. That's the Crown's position. They're saying it's not true. If they have her husband sitting in the background and they have any faith that they can call him to contradict her assertions, you don't have to be a mind reader to figure out that he's going to be the first witness that they call to challenge that. Am I right about that? You are right about that. I mean, one has to appreciate that the Crown, uh, who has the benefit of all the evidence that's been uh, obtained by the police in the course of their investigation, the Crown knows its case. The Crown is mandated to put in its best case, and its best case here would be to try and suggest that uh, Nicole Ryan had either fabricated or exaggerated the abuse. The Crown well knew that the husband was available to be called as a witness. And if they had any confidence that he could convincingly refute her allegations, they would have called him. As Brian suggested, it is very telling that they chose very consciously not to call him. Presumably he had no convincing evidence to refute the allegations. Peter Craig is a senior Crown attorney. He prosecuted Nicole Ryan in the original trial. Good morning, Mr. Craig. Good morning. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. I appreciate... Uh your invitation and uh, the opportunity to talk about this case which has been of interest to uh, many Nova Scotians and discussion and uh, about these sorts of things is always healthy and positive. Why wasn't he called? Well, let me, uh, before I answer your question there, Don, just give you a little bit of background. Uh, this was a very unusual case uh, in many respects. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, Ms. Ryan admitted the entire allegation supporting the charge and uh, that uh, meant the Crown didn't, uh, as is the usual course, uh, call any evidence to support the 
commission of the offense. So the only trial issue, and this is the unusual aspect of it, was whether or not Ms. Ryan had established the defense of duress. Now, the uh, uh, Mike Ryan uh, was a potential witness for the Crown. Most certainly he was under subpoena. And uh, the simple answer to your question is, Mike Ryan's testimony wasn't necessary to refute the defense of duress advanced by Ms. Ryan. And ultimately, that was uh, the position the Supreme Court had taken after consideration of all the evidence. 